red bone. Whoops, hold on. There we go. The red bone coonhound. This breed dates back to before the Civil War in the southern United States. The history is a bit difficult to trace because many coon hunters had red dogs of unknown origins that they referred to as red bones. The red bone coon hounds as we know them are descended from dogs brought by Scottish immigrants. These dogs include bloodhounds and foxhounds. Because of the bloodhound in their ancestry, back in the day there were red bones that had sal black saddle markings like on the like they that there are on the uh, bloodhounds and these dogs were nicknamed saddlebacks. This trait would eventually be bred out in favor of the solid red color that we see today. We can still see some traces of the bloodhound as some dogs can have white patches of fur on their chest or paws, and this can be seen in bloodhounds as well. This breed was meant to be a moderate sized dog that was much faster than, the, than a bloodhound but could still possess the cold nose that can't be found in a foxhound. The red bone coonhound is known for possessing amazing courage. Of course they excel at hunting raccoon, but they have also been known for hunting bobcats and mountain lions. Red bones are good at tracking in various terrain, whether it be in the mountains or in the wetlands, and they may swim after their prey if necessary. This breed was recognized by the UKC in 1902, two years after the black and tan coon hounds were recognized. The red bone would be recognized by the AKC in 2009. Many of you may be familiar with this breed from the book, Where the Red Fern Grows. This was a book I had to read in school. I was in fourth grade, I believe. If you also read this book, let me know in the comments. I asked some of my family members if they also had to read the book in school. My father, who is currently 61, read it. My mother, who is four years younger, didn't read it. And my uncle, who is my mother's younger brother, likely and who likely went to the same school as her, did read it. I find this interesting, so again, let me know. I decided to rewatch the movie while I was making this video. I think it's crazy that Billy spent years working odd jobs and saved up the money not only to buy two hunting dogs from Kentucky, but a pair of new overalls for his father, candy and various other treats for his sisters, and enough material for his mother to make 12 dresses. The amount of money he made was $50, 40 of which he spent on Old Dan and Little Ann, and the other 10 on, for his family. In this day and age, the average price of a puppy from a reputable breeder is about $2,000. And Billy bought two puppies, so double that. I recently acquired a pair of Duluth overalls myself, and they cost about $89, and they were one of the cheaper pairs. I don't doubt he could afford the treats if he were to buy them in this day and age, but um, I don't know what kind of material he bought for his mother, so that's a bit difficult to calculate because I, as I see online, fabric can range in price. Needless to say, part of me wishes it was possible to buy a dog from a reputable breeder for such an incredibly affordable price like that. I also watched the sequel, but I didn't like it as much as the original. Redbone Coonhounds are pretty healthy dogs. It's important to check their ears and teeth regularly. The only concerns may be common large breed issues like hip dysplasia, bloat, and possibly eye problems. Redbone Coonhounds have a life expectancy of 12 to 15 years. Males are 22 to 27 inches at the withers, and females are 21 to 26 inches at the withers. Redbones can weigh between 45 and 70 pounds. They do best in rural environments, and it's best to have a fenced-in yard. They'll follow their nose anywhere, so it would be also be wise to keep an eye on them while they're outside. One of my neighbors has a red bone coonhound that gets loose occasionally and he poops in my yard. I actually don't mind because we have a deer problem. They've been eating our garden and some of them are bold enough to eat the potted plants off our porch. Our dogs stay in the Finston area close to the house, so there isn't any dog smell on the edge of the property where the deers come, come from. He's free to poop there whenever, though his owners don't like it when he gets loose. My neighbors have kids and another dog, so like other members of his breed, my neighbor's Redbone does well with kids and dogs. 
Red bones are about average when it comes to how they are with strangers, which I've seen firsthand. Whenever I try to get him to go home, he barks at me from a distance. Red bones are pretty calm and relaxed indoors if their needs are met. Though like other coon hounds, they can change in, that can change in an instant if there's anything around that triggers their prey drive. So it's best not to have any small animals unless your red bone coon hound puppy is introduced to them properly and they're raised alongside of them. Would I bring a red bone coon hound into my family? Other than my neighbor's dog, I haven't been up close to a red bone coon hound before. I recently have had a uh, positive experience with some blue ticks, and I got to ask the owner some questions. I assume living with a red bone is similar to living with a blue tick. If you had both, let me know about any similarities or differences. If they are truly similar, then I would be interested in a red bone coon hound. The last video in this series will be about the plot hound. Let me know if there are any dog related topics you'd like for me to discuss. Subscribe if you like, if you'd like to, and um, share with a friend who likes learning about dogs. Again, let me know if you have any experience with the red bone coon hound. Have a great day, and what's the matter with your head? Yeah, come and get your love. Uh, my aunt actually met Redbone at, at a bar in the, in the 80s. They're a great band.